Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 for part two of this week's update videos. After talking at great length about what's been going on with the pyramids yet in the uh, yesterday's video, today I'm going to talk about the Stargate and some upda updates and improvements we've made over here. Now these aren't going to be quite as spoilery as what I was talking about yesterday, but even so, if you want to skip past that and go to the second chapter, well, the, the third chapter if you include the intro bit, then, well, I'll completely understand and I'll carry on talking about the normal builds at that point. But Stick around if you want to see what we've been doing with the Stargate. So the big change that's been made in the last stream is that Mark has added in a system over here to cool down all of the thermofluid, and he's brought a load over as well and pumped it into the system. And also, I think we already had the pipes around here, but he's added in the, uh, these ducts that are bringing the, uh, the uh, thermofluid, the appropriate cold thermofluid in, ready to pump it into the, uh, into, into the system here and keep everything chilled. We've also now got the switch over here, which means we can turn the Stargate on and off at will, and also a lot more of these Singularity Reactors. And it turns out I was wrong last time when I said that the Singularity Reactors, because they are reactors, will just constantly burn through fuel all the time, and therefore you don't you need to have some way of removing the fuel from them and just preventing them from working. It turns out that these actually work like generators, so they apparently they will only burn through this fuel in there when, they, when, it's, when the power is actually needed. So at the moment, because we're only using um, 30 well, because we're only using 32 megawatts, we're only generating 31, 32 megawatts out of the 54 we're capable of producing, and all of these singularity reactors are running quite slowly. And so we've got a nice, we've got I see somewhere down here. Yes, there's a nice chain of the uh, of the fuel cells running around here, and all of these have got five in them. So that means we've got plenty of fuel fuel available. It's it's not very it's a little bit spread out, and we've also got a machine up here at the top which will top them up with um, with matter as required as they're used up. So as we've seen before, these are just containers that hold the matter. The matter gets filled up by this machine at the top, then it gets taken out by the singularity reactors and used up and turned into power. And then they'll spit an empty one out, which gets brought up here and refilled and is re then ready to use again. And so this means we can just use this single switch here to uh, power to power the or unpower the, um, the, the Stargate over here. And we don't have to worry about doing anything more complicated, which is, to be honest, quite a relief because it was a bit, it was a bit over the top. Notably in here, it seems to be the beacons that are uh, using virtually all of the power. So that's over here for the, uh, for the cooling, um, but it's not a huge amount of power. It's only about 30 megawatts, and I guess we can we can uh, we can stand that relatively relatively well. So I guess the next thing to do is going to be to turn on the Stargate and have a look at what happens. So let's flick the switch over to the on position. We get power to the Stargate. After a moment, we should see some lights coming. We've got the control lights down here. There we go. The symbols are appearing on the Stargate. They've gone all the way around, and it seems to be rotating. I'm not. 100% sure why, but it has done. And the lights have come on down here, so you can see we've, we've still got that one anchor, and that's from the dimensional anchor we've placed over in Kalidus orbit. We need to put in another seven of those to get all of these lights filled. We're fully chilled, so we've got enough thermofluid going into all of these movable components, in, into all of these uh, cooling systems, into the whatever we're going to call these things. But we've now got the thing brought down to the appropriate temperature, so that's happy. And we've got no target set at the moment. So as we discussed last time, we can we can move the uh, symbols around by by hitting these buttons. And as you can see, the whole thing is rotating. And that means we can then choose we can then choose when to stop it. Hit the stop button. It takes a moment to stop. So we uh, you need to pr uh, pr predict it a little bit, or you can then flick it back a, back a section like that. And we can now now that we've got a bit more power available. I can come over here and I can hit R on this one. And that moves the movable component over, across like that, and it copies this sigil or this glyph over into the into the thing here. And that means if I now rotate it further, we've got that one locked in. And I suppose there's probably no reason why I can't stop it again up here like this and put the same glyph into into uh, this this space up here. So we could set we can use the same glyph more than once if we want to. It turns out. Now it's also very important to note that as we do this, each time we set one of these things, the power consumption goes up by an additional 10 gigawatts. So we are now using, well we're now using 30 gigawatts in total, uh, which is kind of crazy. Um, that's 10 for the uh, platform and then 10 for each of these things. And so because we currently have uh, 54 uh, gigawatts available, that means I can only lock in two more of these before we'll run out of power and everything will just fail. So we can't actually test the Stargate yet. That's that's something we're hopefully going to be able to do next time once uh, Mark has managed to put in all of these additional reactors down here. And that's probably going to require a load more of the matter bottles as well and a bit more matter to fill them up. But 
We've got a decent amount of matter in the tanks, and as I say, we're not ripping through it too quickly. So yeah, we're okay, and as you can see now, now that we're actually using power, we're starting to refill some of these. So let's turn that back off again, because we can't really see anything else on the Stargate, because we don't have enough power available to power every single one of these. That would mean that we'd need a total of 90 gigawatts, and we currently have a total of 50 gigawatts, as we saw before, so we need to roughly double the, uh, the capacity down here. And I imagine that's what Mark has done. Let's have a look. So we've got, he's trying to put in another 25, and at the moment, we've already got uh, 27. So yes, that's going to be about right. It's going to be just enough to power the whole Stargate, as long as we don't get any extra um, power requirements from it. And so, I think we're going in in the right direction with this. We get, we're, we're getting quite close to having this capable to of um, being fired up, turned on, programmed, and just seeing what happens if we put arbitrary random uh, sigils into each of the uh, in, into each of the glyph holders around the outside, just seeing where it goes. Now, if we do do it at random, I'm expecting there to be a sort of a, a wibble in the middle of it, and then some sort of error message saying no, that doesn't work. But at least then we'll have the idea that we've we've sorted out the infrastructure part of it, and now we just need to solve the puzzle side of it, which is. <sighs> That's probably going to be the hard part, I think. But we are, we're making progress, as you saw yesterday. Back over in Norbit, the Fenestra ship is, well, it's sitting here waiting. It's currently, it's currently basically full of matter. I mean, 199,000 out of 200,000, that counts as full when it comes to Factorio fluid mechanics, because they're a little bit, um, a little bit iffy in places. Uh, but as you can see, we've got oodles of matter over here. Things are going really well on the production of that. So the, uh, the ship is ready to go from uh, that point of view. However, it also has this blue chest in it, which is waiting to get the 25 singularity reactors that you saw we need out there in, in Fenestra. And so we want to stock up with all of those, and then once we've got all of that, we'll be ready to then well, we'll be ready to see what the Stargate can do, essentially. Unfortunately, we're a bit short of some of the things we need for that. If we look over here at the uh, machines making, or trying to make the Singularity Reactors, you can see we're very, very short of AI cores, and apparently we've struggled with a couple of other things as well, but let's trace these things one at a time. So, AI cores come in on this belt. You can see there's lots of them along here, um, but they're further up the bus line, and they come from a lot of the way along this long belt. There is a belt that brings them across from over here. This station here is the one where they are, they're, be, they're being passed into the station uh, where they can be put into the train as required and then the train can take them away and uh, to, to, to other places where they're needed but but also we can feed them from here onto the belt going across there and uh, Marcus put in an additional splitter here to make sure that it prioritizes going over to the uh, tower of construction which makes sense because at the moment the uh, I think the top priority is getting those uh, singularity reactors up and running so yeah that's that's fair enough but these aren't working so if we look over here we can see that it's um, at the moment actually we have Oh, it's been turned off. Um, okay, let's turn that back on again. But as you can see, the, the, the problem down here is our old friend, the quantum processor. So this is going to run for a moment or two. We'll make a handful of these uh, AI cores. That'll work quite nicely. The um, the advanced neural gel seems to be getting up here rather slowly as well. So we should, we'll take a quick look into that. But the biggest problem is these quantum processors. And we talked about that yesterday at great length. So I won't do it again, apart from to say that we're having issues transporting the sheer quantity of holmium cable that's required up here. We're making it fast enough. It's just We're just struggling with the logistics. So now the next thing is to say, why are we short of the um, of, of this of this stuff, the uh, advanced neural gel, and also where is it made? Now it's been taken in over here. That's uh, I think. No, no, it's being made over here. This is this is the advanced neural gel construction uh, uh, production, and that's struggling because we don't have enough vanilla basic standard neural gel coming in. Okay, so the other uh, plot thickens. Let's follow that pipe back. That comes down here. All the way down to, no, nope, and beyond here, uh, down to, well, there's a couple of pipes coming over here. So this is a consumer, this is a producer. So down here, we have machines that are producing the uh, the basic neural gel, and I was going to say they all seem to be running flat out. No, they're not. The first couple are running quite happily, but there's a shortage of these bio samples coming in. So once again, we follow the follow the belt back and back and back and go, why are you why are you struggling? Why are you so sad? What's your problem? Uh, we see there's quite, there seems to be quite a lot of them being, Oh no, hang on, they're being made here. There's quite a lot of them being made, it's just not enough. And, well, it looks like there's, yeah, there's a clear shortage of these green pots coming in. Um, at the moment, these most of the machines are working, sure, so we're just about okay. But there's a couple on the end that have run out of biocultures. The biocultures come from down here, <laughs> um, where it doesn't look like there's any shortage. It's just that this one machine making them is, is struggling a bit because it... 
it is struggling. There's, there's apparently to, uh, more more demand than we have supply. So I think the next for our next trick, we should put in another one of these machines that outputs probably onto the other side of the belt. That'd be quite nice over here that pulls in all of these things uh, in, in in large quantities. Although that said, looking at this, we're about to run out of um, genetic data, and that's because we don't have enough lithium chloride coming in. And that if we trace that down here, that's because there hasn't been any brought up in by by the train. Um, okay. Yes, that is the. It does seem to be the only place it comes from. Now, I think Mark has been using Mike's um, extended bringing up bringing up all of the things system. And so over here, yes, we see there is there is some lithium chloride over here, but there is not enough to fill up the train. And so the problem seems to be well. Okay, there's a bit coming through here. So at a guess, I would say the problem is due to the throughput of, of this single train. I suspect there isn't a problem with production down on the ground. Although we do have two, yeah, we have 2,000 in here that's just been brought up, but that's, there's clearly a bit of a problem there. Yes, if we take a look down here on Norvis, you can see that we have a warehouse that contains a significant amount of fertilizer and lithium chloride. These are the two things that are required for biological sciences. And that's pumping through, it's going into the train, at, a, at, a, at an appropriate speed, uh, maybe we could we could probably speed this up a little bit if we wanted to do with some more belts. But at the moment, it it, it it's kind of working. And then, as you can see down here, we're then bringing through more uh, lithium chloride and more fertilizer to top that back up again because apparently we need enormous enormous quantities of it. Down here, if we follow this belt back, we do actually seem to have a shortage of lithium chloride. So I guess we're going to need to make sure we're, we're going to need to try and make a bit more of that as well. But it looks like this lithium chloride problem down here is essentially causing a cascading failure that goes all the way through to the singularity reactors and therefore is stopping our Stargate from working. So yes, I'd say there's two parts of the problem. One is that we're, we seem to not be making it fast enough uh, down here on the ground, or at least not bringing it over to here fast enough because this belt is empty. But given that the train is going round and round solidly, it does also look like we have a shortage of logistics taking stuff up into orbit. So that probably means we need to put in another train down here. And if we take a look down here, we can see there is currently a shortage, a massive shortage of the fertilizer, that minus almost 9,000 at the bottom. We seem to be very short of imosite crystals, but maybe that's not directly related because they aren't brought up from over here. So I'm not going to jump to any conclusions from that. We've got quite a shortage of the, um, the lithium chloride as well. And then there's various ingot types that we're short of too. Um, so I'm, going, I'm not going to worry about the ingots or the crystals at the moment because I think they're brought over elsewhere. Although I did see some um, imosite crystals going into this train. Um, so they could be brought up from here, but we don't want them to be. So the, the problem does seem to be with the fertilizer and the lithium chloride, which makes sense given what's in this uh, in this uh, warehouse here. And given how long I've been waiting for a train to come down, I think we definitely need a second one in here. However, if we do start having multiple trains in, bringing stuff up from here up into space, I think we're going to need to have some sort of parking system down here, and I have no idea where we'll fit that in. Um, because otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of trains just sit, sat in these unloading stations, like I've already done with this beryllium train, which I do feel a little bit bad about. Um, and so there's, a, there's potential here for things to jam up. We need more pause stations like well, like this one here really so that the trains can um, have somewhere to wait when, they, when, when there's multiple trains doing a single run. So the AI cores are the immediate problem that we're having with the with producing these singularity reactors at the moment and as we saw that goes all the way back up through about a million different products until we get back to the original problem. However, Mark says before this became a problem, the uh, Naquium processors were also an issue. So we tasked Mike with uh, upgrading that so we'd have a few more of them coming through and I'm not sure what was done there because the system, the, Mike hasn't said anything in his notes about, about fixing this and it seems to be working absolutely fine now. Now maybe that's because we ran out of AI cores and therefore the, um, the processors have stopped being used up quite so quickly so now we're able to just make them. And this machine here is running, you can see it's filled up the buffer and is now just sort of filling up its own internal buffer um, because the, the belt is full, full along here. Uh, so it's, it's working well at this point, we just need to... Um, see what happens when we have the AI cores available again and can start using these using the processors to a much higher level. Also when we have enough Naquium and start use it and start producing all the sciences again and that, that's also going to put quite a big drain on it. But you know these are these are problems for a future a future point because at the moment the uh, it, it seems to be absolutely fine over here. <laughs> Once all of this is working, we are going to need enormous amounts of matter in order to keep the system running. And so Tristan's been doing some upgrades for the, uh, the matter production. Down here in the core area, he's upgraded all of the, uh, the, the machines along here to tier 6, well, no, many of the machines along here to tier 6 um, modules in them, and put in a tier 6, 6 wide area speed beacon up here. So now these machines can run at many, many times. They can run about 9 times their normal speed, which is pretty good. As you can see, it's ripping through all of the copper that's coming in at the moment. Uh, all of the iron is being, and actually most of the copper is being taken away to be 
taken away by the train system to go off and go, you know, go into the actual factory. But any overflow we do have will then be poured down here. We can see the stone one is working a little bit as well. So we're, we're getting through a little bit of the, uh, the overflow here. And how are the tanks looking? The tanks are... Basically empty. Uh, we've got a basic, a mostly full train here. So as we yes, this this makes sense because as we saw up in uh, Norbit, the matter tanks in the spaceport are all they're mostly full but not actually full. So once those actually fill up, then these trains will start will then start to uh, sit up there and it'll give these ch tanks a chance to fill up and then we can start stockpiling the matter a little bit to make sure it's available for for later um, when we act, when we start running the Stargate a bit more and churning through a lot more of it. Now at the moment because we're just testing the Stargate for a sort of burst of a few seconds, maybe certainly no more than a minute at a time because it because it uses so much power and then we can turn it back off again. We're not really getting through all that much matter. You can see here over the last 10 hours, we've made 1.4 million and we've used almost a million. We're making it at 2,400 2, a minute and using it at 1.6 thousand a minute. So we've got this big spike here where we did, this This may well, this is probably where we uh, filled up loads and loads of matter containers. Then you get these little spikes like this, which is probably where we're testing the uh, Stargate. If we zoom in a bit, yes, this, this big one here will be when I turned the Stargate on and it used quite a lot of power. We drained through and, and therefore had to refuel quite a lot of the uh, little matter cans and get them up, filled up again. So we used quite a lot then. This blip here was probably just the background power that's being used out in Fenestra um, using up one of the cans and then we had to refill that. So you can see how much more power I used uh, just running the uh, running the Stargate compared to the just the idle background draw of the facility out there. However, in that time, we've produced 91,000 and we've used 27,000. So it's pretty sustainable at the moment. We are we see we are producing the matter quite a bit faster than we're using it up. We are just filling up lots and lots of tanks. There's the ones in Fenestra, there's the ones on the spaceship, there's the ones in the spaceport, and then there's the ones on the ground where we're passing the, the matter over from one train to another and then there's the ones over here as well so there's a lot of tanks to be filled up so it, this is going to give us a suitable sink for all of our iron and copper and stone for a good long time but one but eventually but we are producing it quite a bit faster than we're using it so eventually we are going to fill up all of these tanks and then we're going to go gosh now what do we do with all of our matter maybe we generate power with it elsewhere as well who knows we shall see Tristan has also added in a system that's going to make matter from any overflow coal. Um, I think that's oh, it's down, presumably, yes, this one down here. I can just about make out the coal um, icon on this machine, uh, black on black, lovely. Uh, so yeah, we're bringing in any excess coal over here and that can be turned into matter in the same way every other machine will. And then we'll pass it out into here and it'll be pumped along, going to the tanks, etc, etc. In order to give it a bit of a nudge, and the, perhaps the reason why we seem to have quite so much matter available, Tristan also brought over a couple of trains of copper and just manually unloaded them into the station here, which meant they then found their way up into here, round here, and then got to here, and then they didn't need to go over into the trains up there because they were full, so they then end up coming down here and being made into matter. So the system is it allows us to dump extra stuff in over here if we have a shortage, and just to, just to make more well, more matter out of it, uh, but at the moment it's uh, it's a little bit manual doing that. We don't we don't want to do that too often. But however, with the uh, with the amount that's flowing through at the moment, I think we're probably going to be okay without needing to keep yeah, fiddle with it manually too often. He, that said, he does plan to automate it somehow, but hasn't really thought about exactly how yet. Additionally, and sort of loosely related to that, he's also done a bit, a little bit of work down here with um, additional trains for um, coal and and copper coming down from the with the secondary elevator. This is largely going to be for the overflow that comes from Andragon, which is the stone planet where Mike is trying to harvest absolutely everything. So we can bring over excess coal and excess copper down here as well, and then ship that round to be uh, to be dealt with as appropriate. Um, which, um, as appropriate, probably means dumping it into the system over there, and a lot of it will get turned into matter. That said, if we're short of the uh, of, of copper or, or coal at that time, it will then it will be brought up here, and it will go through the sorter, and the sorter prioritise things sensibly. So it would then be brought over and would go into the into the appropriate stations over here. So when we're always going to be using the matter as an overflow, we're never going to be just chucking stuff into turning it into matter unless we start to have real problems with it. We're always going to make sure these stations up here are satisfied first because these are much more important. Uh, to keeping the general factory running, and if the if the overall factory sort of fails, then it's going to make it much much harder to get the uh, the matter systems and the Fenestra and everything else up and running again. So whilst we are whilst Fenestra is the new and shiny and the thing we're most interested in at the moment, we need to keep the rest of the factory ticking over nicely to to support that essentially. So we don't want to create matter at the expense of keeping the uh, keeping the, this area over here supplied. 
The next thing to look at on the list is the Astro Science. And okay, we've got a decent amount of it at the moment. We've got 265 Astro 3 stockpiled in the chest here, and a load more on the belts and so on. But that's because we've been doing a mining productivity research, which relies on biological sciences, which I think the biological is actually absolutely fine. Oh no, no, we've run out of Bio 4. So that's going to be something we'll have to look at. In fact, let's, let's have a very quick look into that. What is the problem with it? Bio 4 is short of Bio 3. Bio 3 is short of, <laughs> it's the Vitalic reagents. It's always Vitalic reagents. That one seems to be the difficult one. And to be fair, it, it does take 40 Vitalic reagents to run this recipe. Now you get six uh, science packs out for it, but still that's very, very expensive. The Bio is the one science system that seems to be um, fighting with Astro to be the one that requires the most ridiculous amounts of inputs, where over here you see we have things like 40 aeroframe poles and 30 aeroframe scaffolds. So yeah, there's a, there's a pro bit of a problem there. Uh, we're we're also struggling a bit with the uh, deep space sciences, although those seem to be okay now. Um, but I think I think there is a bit of a shortage of naquium. So along here, deep space one is it is struggling is too strong a word because there's quite a lot on the belt, but it's not being made and replenished as quickly as we would like. So you can see there's a lot of gap on here. And if we look right over here at the end, well you can see there's no naquium ingots going into this naquium plate platematron over here. So that's the problem. That's the naquium. So that's also on my to-do list. But today I'm trying to talk about the beryllium. I'm just struggling and um, and, and getting myself distracted. So yes. Down here, the Astro Science, we have a bit of a shortage of the Tier 3. That's because over here we have a shortage of the Beryllium Scaffolds which are in theory being made over here, but they're struggling because there aren't any aeroframe poles, which are struggling because there aren't any beryllium plates, which are struggling because we don't have any beryllium ingots, which are struggling because, well, this train's empty over here. And if we follow the follow the chain back, we'll see that the train over here is, oh, actually, summer's just arrived. That's interesting timing. Uh, so we, we, <laughs> we do have a shortage of beryllium. However, right now, some has just been delivered. So we've, we've obviously just had a spaceship arrive because there was a train here unloading and therefore loading up this train, which means that will head over in a moment and we'll, we'll start to get some of those all that useful stuff. And back up in space, yes, you can see clear evidence of a spaceship that has just arrived over here. So we've got unloading going on here from, the, from this warehouse. So we're, we're just unloading junk at the moment because the uh, beryllium has all already been unloaded, at least as far as here, and is being passed through up to this warehouse where it can then be put into a train and brought down. So we actually do have um, a chunk of beryllium at the moment. We've got uh, 25,000 there and another well, almost zero there. So we've got about 26, 27,000, I would say, at a, a rough estimate. Uh, and that is because a spaceship, as I say, has just been and gone. And is there it is, it's on its way back over to Talos at the moment. So uh, while, while we've been waiting over in Talos, well, we've carried on loading, this, loading the warehouses up over here. And these are more than 10% full, so that is kind of working. And that is because down on Talos, I've been doing some upgrading. And this is the one where I was talking about this a bit last week, and make, making uh, talking about making a, a blueprint for this and so on. And now I've made the blueprint, I've dropped it in place, and we now have, well, we still have a trickle coming in from this core miner. But more importantly, we have trains coming in here. And you may or may not remember that these used to be 1-2 trains. And I decided the easiest way to upgrade this would be to make them 1-2-1-2s. And that meant I could just take two existing trains and couple them together. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough drills producing the uh, beryllium or to keep the train system running as much, at the speed I would like it to. But if we tell this one to just clear off somewhere like that, then the next one will pull in. And now that can unload at high speed. We've now got two green belts, at least briefly, coming out of this warehouse. You can see the train has unloaded very, very quickly. Let's get rid of that one as well so we can carry on demonstrating things working uh, as nicely as possible. Uh, for some reason, this train's empty as well. I don't. There is one of the stations isn't working properly, and somehow empty trains are finding their way round here, and I don't understand why. Because it's supposed to go to core pick up until it's full, and then come here until it's empty. So anyway. I'll worry about that in the next stream, but down here you can see we've now got a nicely balanced system that's pulling through all of these beryllium core chunks and kicking out a load of beryl ore on the other side, which can then come down here, be, um, be passed through into through these machines, it's cooked down into the into the molten and then cast down into ingots. And this system allows us to have a nice steady stream of ingots coming out over here, which go onto a belt and are taken down to the train to be taken up into space, as you've seen them a, a million times before. So that's working generally quite quite nicely, except for the lack of um, core fragments coming in over here. So yeah, we've got the, th the theory is good. There just aren't enough core mines on this planet in order to keep everything running at the rate I would like it to. So I did go out and put in some more core mines as well. There's um, there's a couple, there's three more up here because I think these these two were the top of the line before. So I put in another three up here, to, so there's more available, and the train and the trains can then hopefully head out and go and get more from there. There's another one up there, I think. I think I put in another one down. Oh, I, I can't remember. Um, probably this one. I put in a few more anyway. There's a number more of them scattered around the planet, and so they are now producing 
more more core fragments. So it is it is definitely better, but it's not um, it's not as much better as I as I kind of need it to be. And part of the reason for this, and part of the problem is, of course, as you're probably aware, but I'm going to talk about anyway, um, is that when you put in more core miners, it also reduces the effectiveness of all of the core mining drills on the planet. And that means the more you put in, well, if, for, for, if you put in an additional core mining drill, you will get more core core fragments coming out. However you won't get as much more as you expect because everything gets um, get, gets less effective. So it's, it's diminishing returns. And the way it works is it's, it, it takes a square root of the number of core miners you have and then multiplies that by some constant and then splits that evenly amongst all the core mining drills. So if you have one, you'll get one unit's worth of core chunks coming out. And the amount, the amount you get depends on the size of the planet as well. If you then put in a second one, you'll get root two, so about 1.4, you'll get another 40%. If you then go up to four of them, and I'm gonna to jump to four because the maths is easier, you've quadrupled it from the original, so you've got four times the drills, but you, the square root of that is two, so you only get twice the amount of um, core fragments out. If you go up to nine, you'll get three times the original amount. If you go up to 16, you'll get four times the original amount, and so on. So increasing the number of drills massively increases the amount of power you're using, but only slowly increases the amount of um, core fragments you're getting out. So as I say, it's a diminishing returns thing because um, otherwise core mining would be a little bit overpowered, I suspect. So because that isn't sufficient, I've also been going around and I've been doing some upgrades on a lot of these mine areas. And so far I've done I've done about two thirds of them, I think. And the upgrades have been telling the, uh, the warehouses to fill all the way up to full, which isn't much of an upgrade, but helps a little bit. And also more importantly, turning these into one, two, one, two trains as, as well, in the same way I did with the core trains. Now I've not actually updated the trains that are bringing the ore over yet because I haven't updated all of the mines. So if, if I sent off one of these, if I sent off a one, two, one, two train to a mine I haven't updated yet, it would just get stuck there. But next time I will finish those off and then I'll be able to update the trains. And that won't so much increase the amount of ore we're getting through because the mines will still be running at the same speed. However, it will increase the effectiveness of the trains. The trains will be able to load twice as quickly and unload twice as quickly. And that's going to be valuable because I'm also going to want to put in more mines because these mines aren't fast enough, basically. Uh, so I could put in another mine on this one because it's got five million. I could put in another mine. And basically, I want to find all the patches, the decent sized patches that are quite close to my existing rail system. So there's a good one there with 16 million on it. Okay, I'll have to fiddle with the rails a little bit to get them to go around it. But 16 million barrel is 16 million barrel. There's another 33 there and so on. So you can see we'll be able to pull quite a lot out of all these patches with a with just a few more mines put in there and without too much more rail. There's another 5 million there. Was that the one? I think that was the one I looked at before. But you get you get the idea. There's a lot of barrel available on this planet as um just as mine patches like that. Now another thing I could do is I could come along to the uh, one of these uh, areas in the middle here and I could say actually I want to get rid of a couple of these mining drills and instead of those let's put in a wide area beacon and fill it up with speed modules, and then have all of the all of these drills run much, much faster. Now, on the plus side, that would mean we'd get huge amounts of ore being dug up out of these patches. On the minus side, the patch would go down very, very quickly, because we'd be digging it up at five, six, seven, who knows, many, many times the rate. This also interacts in interesting ways with the 110% mining productivity we've got. If you want to get more out of your ore patches, you can put productivity modules in your mining drills and you'll get more ore out of them. And, and um, if you put it in, then if you compensate as well with a speed beacon, it'll make it dig it up faster. And so you'll get you'll get the same amount out, but your patches will last a lot longer. Now, because we've already got this up at 110%, if we come in and put in sort of 20% more mining productivity with modules, it won't make that much of a difference to this percentage here because it adds all the percentages together and then multiplies it by the amount you get. So it's the that you, you don't multiply all of your buffs together because that would be, again, a bit too powerful. And so putting at this point, probably putting speed modules into the uh, into the uh, mines would be more effective than uh, putting in productivity modules. But anyway, as I say, putting in speed modules here will drastically increase the speed that we get through this uh, this ore patch. So on one that's only got three and a half million in it, that's probably not, not a great idea. However, for a massive one like this one with 33 million or um, up here, then using a speed beacon to rip it out faster could actually be quite a good idea. We'll, we'll have to see and think about that. Another possibility, which I haven't really thought about properly yet at all, is to head out to one of the asteroid belts, because Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1 is quite beryllium dense. So if we look out here, we can see at the moment, well, we're launching asteroid um, capsule, uh, asteroid research things from here. But also, if we look further out, then there's an 108 million barrel in this patch here. So if we came out and we put a mine on this one with um, with, speed, with the appropriate speed beacons and, and, and so on, we could pull a lot of barrel ore out of here. Or we could go over to this one, which is even... I was going to say it's even bigger. No, that's only 47 million. That's that's weird. Um, I was expecting it to be bigger because it's physically bigger. But no, this one this one is so much denser. So that's a real a really good 
candidate for a speed beacon. Or we go a little bit further away from the centre, that's water ice over here. Maybe we explore a bit further out and see if there's an even bigger patch. But we could then have a spaceship land here, fill up with beryl ore and take that off to um, over to Talos to be turned into to be processed there on site into into the beryllium rather than mining it on the planet. Now I'm not really convinced that's a good idea because there'd be quite a lot of a logistical hassle there. However, it's something we could consider if these patches start to run a bit low or the hassle of putting out running out the drills for them is a bit of an effort because whilst these ones are sort of 6 million the one out there was 108 million. They're, they're much, much bigger patches or much, much denser patches. You can get huge amounts of beryl out of them. You just need to then transport it and, pro and probably would be by spaceship. And so we'd fly it over and then it'd come down on the space trains. We'd just chuck it in and chuck it into the system over here and have a huge amount of it available for the uh, for the alter for the alternative um, production systems over here. So. I think we won't go with that in the in the short term, but if the beryllium carries on being a problem, that might be the next step if I get fed up with faffing around with mines on this planet and just want to set up a spaceship because, you know, spaceships are fun. As part of the extra production over here, I had to untangle some of these belts on down the side, or at least I, I didn't have to, but I did because it was a horrible mess of spaghetti. Now it's only a small mess of spaghetti. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of tidying up over here and also massively buffed the amount of sand and uh, pyroflux that we're creating because we were seriously short of both of those. With the expanded production, we needed a lot more pyroflux, so I've gone, gone up to the, uh, the proper advanced chemical plants rather than the old-fashioned vanilla ones and also put in a wide area beacon here that's full of... They're only tier 3 modules, but that's fine. I've also put in tier 6 productivity modules in here in order to make the vulcanite go a lot further because that has to be brought over in the spaceship and you know we want to make sure it goes as far as possible so that's being pumped through here we've got well, we've we've got yeah we we've, we've got our ten thousand um, from here, so the pump has stopped. Uh, this is I think stopping there because in theory we we can we, we are producing a small amount of paraflux from the uh, core processing down here, so we want to make sure we can always use that up by priority. We don't want to just completely fill the tank up because then this would jam. The sand is being used as you can see to make the uh, paraflux. It's also used to make the the ingots over here. So we're getting we're getting through a lot of sand. This machine couldn't keep up. Uh, we've got a nice steady stream of um, of stone coming through, and that's all coming from the the uh, the core processing. So we do have plenty of it but in theory we could start to struggle i i hope we don't but it seems seems to be all right at the moment we also produce a fair but fair amount of sand as a byproduct from the system up here it's just not enough on its own we need a bit more so to make sure that everything gets used up in the right order we have a number of belts feeding into into this chest down here so we've got this one that brings in sand from um from nowhere that, that's good um well done there. Uh, that was presumably, yes, it was at one point we thought we had an excess up here. It turns out we don't, so we've, we've stopped using that. Um, okay, I'll probably remove that belt. But yeah, we've got the, we've got the um, the overflow sand coming in from um, from the processing over here. I think we've got an overflow coming in from somewhere else as well, although I can't see how or where now I'm looking at it. I was going to say we also have the overflow coming in from the other production system, but no, we don't. We're just feeding that in as a uh, as the first priority here for using it. So that's and that's working pretty well. We're passing that through to and it's all getting used up. And then as necessary, we can top it up from this belt as well. So yeah, that, that work, works really nicely. And then down here, we've got a prioritization system where we're watching how much is in this chest. And if this ever gets a bit low, then we'll let more come in from this belt here, which comes from the pulverizer. But we'll always be using everything that comes out of the, the other systems first. We're just using this as a top up. And as you can see, we, we use a little bit from the top up, but a lot of it comes in from, from elsewhere. So, this still isn't really sufficient. You, you saw how much of a problem with the beryllium we have back down and back over on the planet. And looking at the production graph, you can see that, yeah, we're producing it and using it at basically the same speed. We've got the wibbling along here as the various trains arrive. We produce, so we are producing it constantly at varying rates. And then every time a spaceship arrives, we rip through all of the beryllium very quickly and then the consumption stops because we've, we've run out and there are problems. Then it rips through it all very, very quickly again when another spaceship arrives and then, it's, and then it goes down to zero again. So I don't think we are actually filling up the buffers at the moment. We're at the point where we're using the beryllium as soon as it's delivered. So we still don't seem to have enough. So this system needs to be expanded and upgraded further. I have a few ideas. The first, one of them is to, is to pull the uh, barrel out of here and send it, feed it into these machines up here because these ones are faster and more efficient and generally better than the other system we've got, than the system we've got running up here because these are all tier 3 prod mods. Down here we've got the tier 6 prod mods, so this is better. So I'd want to feed, so maybe starting to feed this into this system up here would be better instead of passing it through here. So that's one up update we can make. Then I can up, up, make another copy of this, or at least the part of it, the bottom part of this, and use use this system, swap it out for all of the system we've got up here. So that's basically we've got all the bits we need up here. We just need to bring in the uh, the better modules, the tier six modules, to uh, in order to do the, do a big upgrade. Uh, those we are rather short of, but you know if we save up, then we can probably do that. 
But the biggest improvement that needs to be made is going out and doing doing more mining. So as I said, I need to finish upgrading the the various mine stations around the place to 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 to, uh, cap, to, to use the bigger trains, and then go out and capture some more of these beryllium patches. And once I've done that, hopefully at that point we'll have enough coming through that everything will that we'll be able to run the systems down here a bit more solidly, a bit more constantly, have a good healthy supply of beryllium coming through. We can fill the spaceship up quickly, and that will satisfy the factory back over in Norbit and down on Norvis, and uh, we'll be able to actually start doing astroscience at the speed we would like to become accustomed to. That is going to be a large job and for next time though, so come back and join me on Monday when you can see me getting on with all of that and trying to get this up and, up and running at the uh, at the speed I would like it to become accustomed to. I will also be hopefully trying to go out and do, making some uh, further improvements to the Naquium production because as we saw that is also woefully inadequate. Mark will be trying to continue with everything with the uh, related to the Stargate, but he's probably going to be uh, struggling a little bit due to the uh, the lack of the um, uh, generators that he needs. However, given that technically the, um, the 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 problem area is over in the biological area, that probably means it's his responsibility to sort out. So at least he's not going to be bored while he's waiting for the uh, waiting for everything to start working again. I think Mike is going to be going out and getting more Arcospheres because he knows I'm going to start stealing them fairly soon and also exploring more pyramids so we get more data for the puzzle. I'm not sure what Tristan's going to be doing at this point actually because he's finished off improving the Holmium so I'm not sure what's next on his to-do list uh, but I imagine he's probably going to end up doing a bit of tidying up after the rest of us and by rest of us I probably mostly mean me. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah I'm sure he'll find another project to get his teeth into. Um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll uh, delegate off one of the other projects that somebody else is, uh, is technically responsible before over and ask him if he'd, if he'd mind taking a look at it. We shall see. I will also be back on Wednesday for the uh, satisfactory stream uh, where I have now got nuclear power up and running. Hurrah! Uh, it was it was a big effort. It took me about three or four streams to get it going, but um, that was I blame the spiders for that mostly. Um, there was some there were some difficulties there. And so my next uh, for my next trick, I'm going to be getting more of the things required that are required for the uh, for the uh, space elevator. This is, it has some big sort of they're they're not science packs, but they're sort of satisfactory's equivalent of science packs. I'm going to need to get a lot of those intermediates up and running so I can deliver them to the elevator and, well, make that get that satisfied. And of course I'll be back at the weekend with more of the catch-up videos from the next stream, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of, all, any of this stuff, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.